Good morning, Mount Zion. My name is Torin Fields, and I'm a senior at Hume Fogg High School. Good morning, Mount Zion family. My name is Kennedy Hill, and I'm a junior at Rossby High School. Today in the month of March, we will be celebrating Women's History Month. As Kennedy just said, it is Women's History Month, so it's important to celebrate and acknowledge the women here at Mount Zion that have been a trailblazer for multiple other people. And today we would like to celebrate an amazing history maker, Dr. Stacy Puckett Walker. Me and Torin have gotten the opportunity and honor to get to know Miss Stacy in many different ways, in two different ways specifically. But Torin, how'd you get to know Miss Stacy? I got to know Miss Stacy through Saving Our Daughters, which is a ministry here at Mount Zion. Um, you know, my mom had signed me up for it. You know what moms do. Shout out to Rhonda Fields. <laughs> um, but after going to the meetings and seeing what, was all, what it was all about, um, it was just a perfect fit. And I had already been looking for a space for young girls and women that was just going to uplift and encourage and also just be centered around Christ. Yes. So, Kennedy, how did you come to learn about her? And I mean, her? Torin, that was beautiful. I mean, SOD has definitely been an imp impactful uh, ministry in our community, not only for our church, but young ladies moving forward. But, um, Torin, to answer your question, I got to know Miss Stacy through Camp Zion, a camp here at our church during the summer. And um, being that energetic kid, you know, being enthusiastic and always getting into things, she never set that as a label for me. And she always um, put forth the effort to get to know me more as a person. Um, and as I got older and got into the teen ministry, she changed my outlook and did a whole 180 on the church experience. So it's only fitting that we honor her today. Yes, definitely. And honestly, Dr. Stacy has had such a deep impact on young women and just the Mount Zion community in total. Um, Personally, saving our daughters has been such an impactful thing on my life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I would be where I'm at today without the amazing people, the women, Dr. Stacy. Um, I was, I have been able to tap into my potential and just mm -hmm. um, lock in with myself and what God has for me. And just being around these amazing women week after week um, who inspire, who are intelligent and just amazing, beautiful women um, is definitely push me to where God is wanting yeah. me to go. I mean, anytime I see Miss Stacy in, in church or outside of church, she always asks about my academic process and my personal progress. And so, um, you know, it's without a shadow of a doubt that we should be honoring her today. But I mean, what is your relationship with her? Honestly, Miss Stacy is like a second mom for real. No matter how many girls join or extra people come to our meetings, she's just gonna love them. Open arms, just a big heart for us. Yes. Um, just inspire us and she's always going to create um an educational loving and open-minded mm -hmm. environment to cultivate and plant seeds of hope in our minds and just push us where god is wanting us to go mm -hmm. so what we're both saying essentially is that we both agree that it's without a shadow of a doubt that we should be honoring her today right we should be honoring her. and so with that being said it's only fitting that we put her in that bubble of people of advocates such as uh shirley chisholm and um shari uh Ralph Mount Lee Angelo. and Mount Angelou and all those people. You see what I'm saying? Because not only is she an advocate, but she also uh, is an activist for equality, inclusion, and diversity. So it's only fitting that we put forth that effort to put her in that bubble. I, I definitely agree. And as we celebrate Women's History Month, especially in the Mount Zion family, yes. um, we should just take a look around and look at the amazing women that we have here. Um, if you're interested in engaging with SOD, we have meetings every second and fourth Monday from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. at the OHB location, so right here. <laughs> um, and if you also need another way to contact us, you can email sod at mtzionnashville.org. Um, mm -hmm. And how can they get involved with Camp Zion? Well, they can get involved in Camp Zion by um, going on to the MT Zion Nashville uh, website as well, and also contacting uh, Uncle D or Daryl Walker here at the church. And... I don't know about you, Kennedy, but I think it's time to worship. Me too. I think it is time to worship as well. But, um, yeah, we just, we should um, keep on celebrating Miss Stacy. We love you. We love her. Um, she's just such an impactful and powerful woman. And, yeah, she's an amazing woman. I mean, yeah, she definitely advocates all the time for us, and we appreciate her effort. And we just like to say, Miss Stacy, that from the bottom of our hearts, this honor comes from us, not only from us, but from the community, the, the Nashville community, and the whole Mount Zion community. So um, I think it's time we put our attention towards the announcements.
Hello, I am Pastor Katina Parrish Clark, and I serve as the Associate Pastor of Congregational Care right here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. I have served in ministry since 2008, but in this role since 2021. My name is Maya Naomi Lipscomb, and I am the Creative Director at Mount Zion, and I'm also a filmmaker specializing in writing, producing, and directing for film and television, and I have been in the industry for almost 10 years now. Well, hey everyone, my name is Pastor Diamond J. Gant, and I serve as the Associate Pastor of Vision Development and Execution right here in Mount Zion. I started preaching at the age of 15 years old. Yeah, I can't believe it. It's been about 12 years now. And I tell you, the role to this role has not always been the easiest to navigate. The film and television industry is definitely a male-dominated industry. And while strides are being made towards inclusivity of women in leadership roles in this field, we still have some ways to go. I remember once being at a conference and someone said to me, or said to the conference rather, that God was calling women just because men wouldn't step up to their rightful place. And I had to wrestle with the fact that was my call in direct correlation to someone else's fall? Or was it that I was really called to be a change agent in the world? And God reminded me in that moment, didn't you ask me for direction? And I said, well, God, I did. He said, well, I have planted your feet right here. And so what God confirmed to me in that moment is though you are on the path that I have you on, it's not gonna always be void of trouble, but neither is it gonna be void of triumph. And so I come to share with you all on today that even in this role, oh, I see the trouble, but I'm always looking for the triumph that's lurking around the corner. I have been a part of productions as the only woman, and the only woman of color. Now, times like that can get discouraging, but I chose to take it as a reminder of God's intentionality behind my purpose. My faith reassures me that he places me in those rooms and in those situations for a reason. And so now I walk in the liberty. Where there once was tension, there now is freedom in my life. I am called by God and I know that. I want you to walk and the liberty and the freedom that God has called you to walk in. My name is Pastor Katina Parrish Clark, and this is my Her Story Moment. My name is Maya Naomi Lipscomb, and this is my Her Story Moment. My name is Pastor Diamond J. Gant, and this is my Her Story Moment. As testing season is approaching for our youth, we want to remove any testing anxiety students may be facing by offering Project Quest, specifically for third and fourth grade students. These workshops will take place at 6 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, April 3rd at our Antioch location and Wednesday, April 10th at our OHV location. Students will participate in various activities with their parents, such as scavenger hunts, highlighting specific skills featured on the TCAP assessment. Additionally, they will hear from counselors and educators regarding test-taking skills, strategies, and other helpful tips to ensure their success. Register today by texting QUEST to 78228. He's a scholar, humanitarian, philanthropist, academician, presiding prelate over a reformation of several hundred churches. He's a family man and so much more. And for over three decades, our pastor, Bishop Joseph W. Walker III, has been a guiding light for us here at Mount Zion, within the Nashville community, and around the world. You know, his unwavering commitment to God's call, his profound wisdom, boundless compassion and leadership has been a source of inspiration and strength, leading hundreds of thousands on a journey of faith hope, purpose, and fulfillment. And this year, this Renaissance man, this man of God will be celebrating 32 years of pastoral ministry. You know, we have a world-class leader who has been consistently present, encouraging, enlightening, and inspiring us all. And this year, we want to let him know how much we love and appreciate him. That's why I want you to join us in honoring our pastor by sowing a seed of honor of at least $32. Now to do that electronically, all I want you to do, I want you to text the word Bishop plus the dollar amount 
to 267 MTZ Seed. If you want to give by offering envelope right there in the category of other, write your dollar amount and in parentheses, just write the word Bishop. Listen, family, what better way to celebrate our leader than by sowing a seed of honor to let him know how much we love and appreciate him. We thank you in advance to all of our friends, our partners, and the Mount Zion family for joining us in celebrating the one who is building a lasting legacy as we celebrate 32 years of excellence in ministry. Thank you so much, and we can't wait to celebrate with you. We're on the road to 32. Let's go. The Mount Zion Baptist Church is a word-centered ministry designed to evangelize the lost at any cost, equip and empower the people of God, and provide holistic ministry to our community as well as the world. Seeking to minister to the total person, we are multi-ethnic, multi-cultural ministry impacting the world in which we live with the uncompromising message of Jesus Christ. Committed to the spirit of excellence, we are striving to become oasis of hope within the Nashville community by promoting and providing education, awareness, as well as financial independence. We believe that God must be worshipped in spirit and truth. We embrace freedom and worship because the word says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Our foundation is the word of God and we believe it in its entirety. We believe we can do what it says we can do. Be who it says we can be. And have what it says we can have. Good morning, Mount Zion family, and welcome to you Sunday. Today's scripture will be coming from John 12, verse 12 through 13. It says, the next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Heavenly Father, I bless you today. I ask that you watch over us as this year has been very long and exhausting. God, I thank you for watching over me and just praising my life and praising everyone today in this church. God, I thank you for Bishop Walker and the youth ministry for watching over me and teaching me so many things, God. God, I hope this year continues to be very wonderful and very amazing, God. I just wanna say thank you all for Mount Zion and for Bishop Walker and this whole youth ministry. In Jesus' name I pray, and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, how many glad to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, happy Palm Sunday. The scripture just identifies that they were coming, when he was coming into the city, that it was a celebration. So how many can celebrate? Come on, how many can celebrate? Today, Jesus is still entering the city. Today, he's still entering my situation. So today, we cry out, Hosanna! Come on, hallelujah, Hosanna in the highest. Because he's king of kings. Because he's Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're marvelous, you're marvelous, and you're 
brothers may be victorious, God, you took away the pain in us. Now we praise you. There ain't no stopping us. No. Sunday, the beginning of this Holy Week. And for some of us that don't know, Palm Sunday was the Sunday where Jesus came into the city and they celebrated him. And they say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the king, the king of Israel. That's what they said. And they celebrated him because they knew who he was when he entered the city. They had heard of the, the things that he's done, the delivering, the healing, the way making. And when they knew when he was coming in, they thought he was coming in a, in a chariot. They thought he was coming in a horse, but he came in a donkey. And I'm so glad that God was selfless even then. Come on, how many can celebrate that he was selfless even then? Because later that week, they didn't know that he would do the biggest sacrifice. And I'm up here thanking God. And I wish I had some people with me this morning that would scream, Hosanna, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing. Oh. Oh, 
Come on, God. We lift you up. Oh, Say it again all over this place, Hosanna. Oh, in the in the highest. Yeah, let our King be lifted. Hosanna. Oh, Hosanna. Oh, higher, higher. We lift you high. Can we lift our hands in this place? Oh God, we lift you higher. Higher. We lift it higher. Can we say that in this place? Jesus, Jesus, you be lifted higher. We lift you higher. We lift it. The Bible says that a child shall lead the way. And even as these young people are leading us, they're inviting us to lift Jesus higher. So just for a few moments, will you do what they're admonishing us to do? Will you just lift Jesus higher in your own way? Come on, why don't you just open up your mouth and lift him? Why don't you tell him how much you love him? We lift you higher today. We lift you higher than the hatred. We lift you higher than our problems. We lift you higher than the diagnosis. Today we lift you higher. We even cry out Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. So now God, even in this place, as the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit is permeating through this place. Today, God, we choose to lift you higher. Somebody came in today with weary, with a bow down head. Lord, we pray as we lift you higher that you would take us higher. We pray that as we lift you higher that you would take us to higher heights. For even the Bible declares that the Bible declares that when we lift up the name of Jesus, that you will draw all men unto you. So Lord, we pray that even now that you will move in this sanctuary. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we say together, Amen and Amen. Come on, put your hands together. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Uh, can you feel the Lord moving in this place? Listen, I want you to do something special just in this moment as these young people were leading. When you look on Facebook, you look on Instagram, you see all these things on the news about today's youth. But we had some youth leading us in worship. I want you to put your hands together and encourage these young people, these musicians. Come on, we can do better than that. They're simply amazing. They're amazing. They're amazing. Oh my gosh, you may be seated. Certainly as I sat there and just watched them, I remember even how God would just raise up youth. You never know who these kids are gonna be called to be. Those are next doctors, lawyers, preachers, teachers. One day I'm gonna be retired. They're gonna be standing right here leading the reflection. So we thank God for the anointing on their lives. Well, if this is your first time worshiping with us, we don't want you to stand. Will you just wave at us if this is your first time worshiping at the Mount? Come on, Mount Zion. 
Let's thank God for all of those who are worshiping with us, even those who are watching online. If this is your first time, I just want you to drop one in the chat, the number one, and I promise you people are going to begin to just say thank you for worshiping with us. They're going to flood that chat with welcome. Well, if you're watching online or in the sanctuary, this is your first time, will you just send us a text? Just text the word guest to 78228. Text the word guest, and we're going to send something special your way. Well, we're on the road to Resurrection Sunday. I'm excited about Easter Sunday, and it's going to be simply amazing. We want you to remember that we're going to have a Good Friday service, Good Friday service at 12 noon. Uh, it'll be hosted at our Jefferson Street location, and Pastor Jerry Black from Beulah Missionary Baptist Church in Decatur, Georgia, is going to be there. Somebody said it's greater in Decatur. So uh, he's going to come and bless us, bless us with a mighty, mighty word. That's 12 noon at our Jefferson Street location on the 29th of March. So we're looking forward to that. Even now, as we're preparing for uh, Easter, we're still doing our Andrew Initiative. We're believing God for 1,000 souls. We're going after 1,000 souls for the Savior. So we want you, remember, bring five people with you. Now listen, you may be saying, Pastor Diamond, where am I going to find them five people? Find the person on your job that gets on your nerves the most. And just go ahead and slip them. Just say, come on to Mount Zion. Tell them, come on Mount Zion. Zion. Find your cousins, find anybody. Just invite five people as we're believing that God is going to do something amazing. You can scan that QR code right there on the screen or just text the word invite. We want you to remember to complete one form per person and the deadline for eligible invitations is Wednesday, March 7th. So please make, March 27th, excuse me, make sure that you do that. And we're looking forward. Somebody said we're having five services on Easter, five services. Services. We want you to join us either at 6 a.m. at the Jefferson Street location for sunrise service, 7 a.m. at our Antioch location, and we're inviting our Brentwood family to attend that service for Christ and coffee. That'll be at Antioch. And then you can join us right here at our OHB location uh, at 8.15 for service, and then even at 9.30 a.m. for Antioch, and then right back here at 11.15 a.m. at OHB. I'm I'm so glad that you all only have to go to one. I'll be at all five. <laughs> Some of y'all say, I'll see you there. I'll see you there. Well, as you know, we're always making room, not only uh, for the souls that are coming, but your church is always thinking about you all uh, in our planning. And so for our OHB overflow parking information, we want you to look at the screens, but we want you to know that our OHB uh, service overflow parking is going to be located at Davidson Academy. That's right down the road on Old Hickory Boulevard. We have a shuttle service that will run continuously from Davidson, Ca Davidson Academy to our OHB campus as well. And listen, for your convenience, our shuttle service will pick you up near your car and drop you off right at the church door. That's better than Uber, y'all. That's better than Uber. You can find more information about overflow parking on the Mount Zion app. We'll also be sending out some text there. Uh, but what we want you to know overall, if you didn't catch anything about that parking, if you don't see a Mount Zion sign, then that's a sign that you shouldn't park there. We don't want you to come and enjoy Easter service and be worried about your car on the back end. So make sure you uh, stay tuned for all of that. We want your experience here at Mount Zion to be pleasurable from the parking lot to the pew. And we don't want you to run the risk of getting your car towed and we certainly don't want you to be unsafe. So please park in the designated areas identified for Mount Zion and we thank God for it. Well, listen, we are looking forward to to the Becoming a Couple of Destiny Marriage Conference and Bishop Walker is getting ready to come to take us higher in worship. Come on, welcome our pastor as he comes. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Diamond, and we thank God for all of you, and we are really excited. Listen, Becoming a Couple of Destiny Marriage Conference 
It's going to be amazing. And uh, we're just a few weeks away, April 11th through the 13th, downtown Nashville, Renaissance Hotel. We have some of the most amazing guests that are coming. And we want you to be a part. Even if you're not uh, staying at the hotel, you can definitely come to the conference, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether it's complicated. Bring all your complications into the conference. It's going to be a blessing. We want you to be a part. Text BCOD to 78228. We've got about... Uh, 500 to 700 seats available and we need you to help us fill those seats and so we want to make sure you come if you need scholarships to attend the conference they are now open you can apply for a scholarship or register at bcod the thing cost prohibitive we want to make sure that every single person uh, is able to attend this conference because we want to see marriages and relationships grow. So make certain that you are a part. I promise you it will be a blessing to your life. We're thankful. It's going to have everything, food, and you're going to have all the uh, incredible uh, uh, party we're going to have on Friday night and food and just a power-packed conference. It's just going to be one stop for everything. So make certain that you are a part. We want to also cover our students today, particularly our third and our fourth graders as it pertains to the Tennessee Retention Law. And uh, if you are a young person and you are in the third or fourth grade and you are getting ready for that test, if you don't mind real quickly coming down to the altar, amen. We just want to cover you. And if you, if we want to cover these young people, amen. Amen. If you got anybody in that age bracket, amen. Praise God. I've been praying. There you go. All right. Praise God for you. Amen. I see you. I see you. Come on. That's wonderful. Y'all are so awesome. Y'all are so awesome. Amen. Parents standing with them. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Amen. We want our kids to excel, and we want to cover them. And thank God for these parents. <laughs> parents that are invested in them. Amen. Thank God. They're still coming. And if you're watching around the world, and uh, you're watching in Tennessee specifically, and you have a third or fourth grader, make sure that you bring them to the screen right now. Amen. Let's pray over them today. Amen. God bless y'all. Yes, indeed. Father, I thank you right now for each one of these young people. I thank you for the parents and guardians that stand with them as they prepare for this test, exams. I pray, God, that you just remind them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made and they have an amazing future. And let them know, God, that they can do anything they put their minds to do. We cover them now. We pray, God, that you would just allow them uh, to bring that information back to their memory. If they study hard and work hard, they will be successful. And we believe that each one of them, under the sound of my voice, will excel, will pass this test, and will move on to the next grade. We believe it's already done. Thank you for the parents and guardians who are invested in their education. And we thank you now and give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, it is so. Come on, let's give God glory. Thank you. Isn't that amazing? We're grateful to God, and that's what this is all about. Today on our Youth Sunday, we're grateful to God, and we're thankful. We're going to prepare our hearts today. The baby dedication, so thank God for them as they come today. We want to bless these babies today. I thank God. Come on. Amen. Four families we're going to bless today, these babies, and I'm thankful to God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless y'all. God bless you. Bless you and bless you. We are so incredibly thankful for what God has done, what God is doing. And you are here today because God has great things for your life. For us to be a blessing to you is to pray over you, to pray over your children, to ask God's incredible blessings. So today, I want you just to bow your heads outside. Let's pray together. Come on, let's do it. Come on. Father God, we thank you that 
The children are a blessing and a gift from you. We ask, Lord God, even now that you will continue to bless them, to protect them, to keep your healing hand upon them. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you bless the parents, Lord, that you will provide for them, Lord, that you would uh, give them the wisdom, God, to train up their children in the way that they should go because when, when they grow old, they will not depart from them, from you. Ooh, who do we have here? We thank God for this baby today. Who do we have here? Come on. Kason Boykin. Kason. Hi. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> God bless you. Thank you so much. Who do we have here? Kyron Jair Childress. Hey there. How are you? All day the baby's been turning away from me. Come here. Hey. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take it. All right, let me talk to the dads. Who we have here? Zayden Kai Cribs. Zayden, hey. Oh, one today. Hey. Who we have here? Camille. <laughs> uh, Camille London Hughes. Camille, hi. How are you? Hello? <laughs> God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. God, let's thank God for all of these families today. Come on, let's give God glory. God bless y'all, man. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> God bless you. God bless <laughs> What a blessing. Isn't that awesome, y'all? That is so amazing. We thank God. Come on, let's give God the glory. God is so amazing, and we give him all the praise. I tell you what, he is an awesome God. And we're going to prepare our hearts to worship God now in our giving today. How many people can say God's been good to you? Come on, he's been good to you. Let's prepare our hearts right now to worship him in our giving today. And as we prepare, let me tell you, I am really excited. This week is going to be amazing. Good Friday service. Y'all got to get ready for it. It's going to be amazing. As we prepare, I want you to get ready. Pa Pastor Jerry Black's going to be here Friday. It's going to be awesome. I know you've heard, but it's going to be awesome. Make sure you're in the house. But as we prepare for Good Friday, prepare for Easter Sunday, I want you to be mindful that this is the time of year we can say to God, you've given all, you've sacrificed all. Now we sacrifice unto you. We give back to you. So to God be the glory today. Let's prepare our hearts right now and our tithe, our offering, and let's give liberally to God today. If you're watching me around the world, thank you in advance. Let's prepare our hearts to do just that now. If you the envelope, raise your hand. Otherwise, you can give at the prompts at the bottom of the screen now. Amen. These young people are going to bless us today. Put your hands together for the awesome young people of Mount Zion Church. Father, we thank you. We pray blessings be upon every family, every household, every business, and we thank you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. You can go to show the way. love him this morning. Amen. If you're not ashamed, lift your hands right there and let him know how much you love him. Come on, let's feel this atmosphere. God, we love you. God, we adore you. God, we honor your name. God, we love you. Simple song, real easy. It says, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me. Can you raise it up? And that's why I praise you. I lift you up. There you go. That's why. You got it. Come on, Judah, help us sing together. Say, I love you. Says, 
my heart, my mind, and my soul. You paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why. I lift you up. Take it up and Let's give God glory. That's why my heart is filled with praise. You better sing. Y'all better sing. Y'all better sing that. Y'all better sing that. Y'all better sing that. <laughs> That's why my heart is filled. Hallelujah. Ooh, come on. Let's thank God for his word today. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray your word will speak life and let us receive this word today. We are made the better because of what we shall hear. Let somebody's soul be saved. Somebody's life be transformed forever. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 23. I want to focus in on verse 39 through verse 43 today, the Gospel of St. Luke. The word of the Lord says this, and then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him. If you are the Christ, he says, save yourself and us. But the other answered rebuking him saying, do you not even fear God seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. I want you to lay your hands on yourself and just say, Even me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on today. When you take time to seriously reflect upon the depth and the breadth of how God loves you, it really is beyond human comprehension. How God loves us was really encapsulated in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That word so means no matter what you have done, it's as if though God was saying, so, I still love you. 
You look at the life of Jesus Christ and how he loved in the earth. It gives us a great revelation of how his love should be displayed in the lives of others around us. The amazing thing about his love is that he was willing to break the rules in order to bring us into relationship. He did not judge us based on our personal habits. Rather, he looked at our hearts. He did not define us based on our history, but he defined us based on our destiny. This kind of love would often put Jesus at odds with the religious establishment because he would supply strength for the weak. He would be available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathized and he saved. He guards and he guides. He healed the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He forgave the sinners. He discharged the debtors. He blessed the young. He served the unfortunate. He looked out for the least, the last, and the left out. Jesus was, had a ministry that was personal, powerful. He had a ministry that was prolific, that was intentional about helping people know no matter where you were in your life, that God had something greater for you. It's exactly why he is such a faithful God. Because when I look at myself, when I look at the flaws in my life, I'm in awe that he would love somebody like even me. God is sending this word to our life today because it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're caught up in. It doesn't matter what society or religious people have determined about you. If you are desirous of a relationship with him, he's able and he's willing to give you the desires of your heart. Here is a man who was a criminal who is receiving his just punishment on the cross, and yet he cries out to Jesus, and he asks Jesus to remember him. The response he receives gives us all hope that the Lord makes room for somebody like you and for somebody like me, that even me has a chance at redemption. Even me has a chance Even though I've got flaws, even though I've got mistakes in my past, even me has a chance to walk into the promises of God. Luke is a powerful word. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. We commemorate the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem. But Jesus rode on a donkey while the crowds waved palm branches and spread their cloaks on the road before him shouting, Hosanna. And the events would mark the beginning of Holy Week that would actually bring us to a place like today. As I share in Luke chapter 23, the scene of the crucifixion. The Gospel of Luke offers us a unique perspective about the crucifixion compared to the other Gospels because it is here in Luke's account we're able to see Jesus as the forgiving Savior. We see Jesus who forgives those who persecute him. Jesus makes a promise of paradise to a repentant criminal. In Luke chapter 23, the events kind of lead up to this, and you begin to see, first of all, you begin to see a brief history and summary of how Jesus ends up on the cross. It starts because the religious leaders have brought Jesus to Pilate. There was a conspiracy to have him crucified. I dare he say he is the Son of God. They bring him to Pilate, the Roman governor, and they accuse him, however, of misleading the nation and forbidding others to pay taxes unto Caesar. Pilate questions Jesus but finds no fault in him. However, the crowd insists, and Pilate then sends Jesus to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod questions Jesus, hoping that Jesus would perform one of those miracles he heard about. Yet Jesus remains silent, and Herod and all of his soldiers mock Jesus, sending him back to Pilate. Pilate, after finding no basis in the charges against him, tries to release him, but the crowd demands, release Barabbas. Barabbas was a notorious criminal. Instead, they release Barabbas, and now Pilate eventually has to give in to the crowd's demands and hand Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus is led away to be crucified. He walks to Golgotha, exhausted after being beaten. And now Simon of Cyrene is forced to carry the cross for him. And now Jesus ends up on Calvary, Golgotha's hill, the hill of skulls. He is there, and the Bible says he is there, and he is crucified between two criminals, one on the right and one on the left. It has been argued by some These criminals, uh, they have said that one was a good criminal 
and one was not. I'm trying to figure out what a good criminal is. But they actually had names. One of their names was, was Gestus, meaning uh, to complain or to moan in Greek. The other's name was Dismas, which means in Greek death or sunset. And the Gospel of Luke calls them thieves, but we get their names from the apocryphal book of Nicodemus who gives us their names. And it is there. Nothing happens by accident. Please understand, nothing in Scripture happens by accident. The fact that they're on Calvary at this time and the fact that Jesus is crucified where he is crucified in the middle of two thieves gives us a revelation God is speaking because nothing happens by accident. One of the thieves says, if you be who you say you are, you are the Son of God, right? Then save us and save yourself. And the other one looks and says, don't you know who he is? I dare you. You don't fear God? This man has done nothing. We deserve what we are getting. He says, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, will you just remember me? What a powerful revelation in this text for us today to understand the power and the depth of how much God loves somebody like you and me. Let's understand what's going on. We have to look at the first thief, and we have to understand the problem of a selfish petition because the Bible juxtaposes the two thieves on purpose because... The thief on the cross who is selfish, he literally mocks Jesus in a profound way to where it is called blasphemous. He is so self-centered in his attitude that it prevents him from recognizing the innocence of Jesus' divinity and it deprives him of a chance of forgiveness and salvation. His conversation is based on self-centeredness. He literally says to Jesus, you should save us and save yourself. All he's thinking about is himself. That's pride. And whether or not you want to admit it, pride blinds you of God's plan. Pride, people of God, also known as hubris or excessive pride, is a form that involves an inflated sense of self-importance or superiority. It can lead to arrogance, boastfulness, a lack of empathy or consideration of others. Pride is a thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven. Pride, the Bible says, goes before destruction, the Holy Spirit before a fall. Here is a man dying on a cross, and even in the presence of Jesus, cannot let go of his pride. Jesus is committing the most selfless act in human history by giving his life for the sins of the entire world, and now he has to be met with the most selfish request from a man who's only thinking about himself. There are a lot of people who have missed great opportunities because pride got in the way. The thief demonstrates several manifestations of pride. I want to talk to you about them because pride will show up when you are unrepentant. He is unrepentant. And there are a lot of people who are unrepentant. You just refuse to just repent. You just think, hey, this is just what it is. I'm not going to repent. But let me tell you something. Unrepentance can be a problem because it's rooted in your pride. And when you're unrepentant, that means you don't own your own stuff. And because he is unrepentant, he is also uninformed. Remember, the second thief said, don't you know who this is? You have lost your mind. See, when people don't know your purpose, then they are confused when you don't respond like they think you ought to respond. My purpose is bigger than your request for my life. When I understand my purpose, Jesus is like, I can't come down off this cross because you want me to come down off this cross because you don't know what this cross is doing right now. Love has me on this cross. I'm trying to help. If he came down from the cross, you and I would not have a chance at eternal life. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he stayed on the cross. <laughs> he is unrepentant. He is uninformed, but he is also ungrateful. How can you be that close to Jesus and not even just be thankful for the opportunity just to even have a conversation with him? Sometimes people who are arrogant are just always ungrateful. Lord, deliver me from ungrateful people, people that sit around and all they do is think about what they want but don't have the audacity to even say, Lord, I thank you just for waking me up another day. I know you may be in a cross situation, but you got something to be thankful for. I know things may not be like you want them to be, but you got something to look over your life and say, Lord, I just want I want to thank you that you woke me up. Thank you that you kept me in my mind. Thank you that I got a reasonable portion of health and strength. Stop adding up your problems and start counting your blessing. Any grateful people in the house today? <laughs> but let me help you understand something. God does not 
respond when we don't respond to his word. Jesus is silent in regards to the first thief's request. You ever notice Jesus doesn't say anything? Because I told you a few weeks ago, ignore ignorant. When somebody's ignorant, just ignore ignorant. Not ignorant, ignorant. If you be who you say you are, you know who I am. Save yourself and say, that's ignorant. Jesus is silent. But notice something. It is a deeper revelation. It is not by accident that Jesus does not respond. John chapter 1 tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, and we beheld his glory. So as a consequence, this man is saying all the wrong things. He is talking to the Word, but he is not quoting the Word. He is making a prayer, but not using the Word. He's using his own words. He's using his own ideas. He's using his own agenda. In his prayer without recalling the word back. And so when you don't use God's word back to God, God does not respond. The reason why God may be silent in your life because you are not calling God's word back to himself. See, the last time I checked, his word does not return unto him void, but it accomplishes what he sends it to do. So when I pray and I need results, you know what I've learned to do? I've learned to call God's word back to himself. God, you said by your strength I'm already healed. So I'm believing you for my God. You said you would supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. God, you said you would keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind stayed on you. God, you said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God, you said if I be not weary in well doing in due season, I'm going to reap if I faint not. God, you said you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Learn how to call God's word back to himself. And somebody can be a witness. That's when miracles happen. That's when breakthroughs happen. When you call God's word back to himself. Listen. First thief doesn't get an answer because he doesn't call the word back to Jesus. He is saying something to Jesus that doesn't align with the word. Come down from the cross, that don't align with the word. Jesus only responds to that which is aligned with the word because if it aligns with the word, it aligns with his will. Watch this. Here's the second thing. The power of a spiritual perspective. Because what you must understand now is the second thief who clearly recognizes who Jesus is. He has the right perspective. He asked the first thief, don't you even fear God? In other words, what's wrong with you, bro? You don't reference Jesus? You don't know who you're talking to? You see, people of God, a real sense, in a real sense, you must understand this. Before you ask, acknowledge who he is. Before you ask God for anything, at least acknowledge him. Doesn't it bother you when people just walk up to you and say, can I, give me, hey, hi, good morning. I'm doing fine, thank you. Because <laughs> people have a tendency to want what they want and discount who you are. You want what I have, but you don't want to accept who I am. I'm going to help somebody up in here today. People of God, listen carefully. And the thing that's interesting is that this second thief says to the first, look, we, we, we deserve what we get. This man has done nothing. When I acknowledge something, it shows up this. I say it like this. I am guilty. Now, I know this may not resonate with some of you because you, you're not, you don't feel like you're guilty. But this man says, we deserve what we get. This man has done nothing. When you go before God, the way to go before God is acknowledging, Lord, everything they said about me ain't true, but some of it is. <laughs> I wish I had a witness up in here today. Anybody here want to be honest about the fact 
that you guilty. I mean, I know you sitting in here looking all spiritual and deep, like you ain't never made no mistake, like you squeaky clean, but I need somebody to go and be honest. There's some stuff I'm guilty of, and because I'm guilty of it, God, I acknowledge it, but I juxtapose my guilt by saying, but he's great. I may be guilty, but I'm next to the one who's great. I'm giving God glory because, God, you are so great. And when I pray, remember in the model prayer when you pray, Jesus says, when you pray, pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Before you ask him for anything, acknowledge his greatness. Acknowledge who he is. That comes a point. You got to say, God, before I ask you for anything, I just want to acknowledge how awesome you are. You are a great God, and I stand before you needing your grace because now I recognize because of my guilt before your greatness. I know where grace comes from because can't nobody help me out of this situation but you. And so God I know who you are. Sometimes you've been master. Sometimes you've been savior. Sometimes you've been deliverer. Some days you've been sustainer. Some days you've been prince of peace. Some days you've been king of kings. Some days you've been lord of lords. Some days you've been rent payer. Some days you've been tuition payer. Some days you've been mind regulator. Some days you've been gas in my car. Some days you've been grocery in my basket. Some days you've been a company keeper. Some days you've been a healer. Some days you've been a redeemer. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. And here it is. Watch this. Second, second, second he says, no, no, I you better know who you're dealing with. You don't know who he is? He is the son of the living God. You talking to him any kind of way. And here's, it's not only knowing who he is, but you got to know where he is. He's in it with you. Ooh, I'm going to shout by myself right now. This is not a coincidence. One thief is on the right side. One thief is on the left side. Where is Jesus? In the middle. He's the middle man. I don't care what you're going through. He's in it with you. If you're in the valley of the shadow of death, he's with you. If you find yourself in a storm on the sea, the disciples will tell you he's in the boat with you. If you find yourself in a fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will tell you he's right there with you. If you find yourself in the lion's den, Daniel will tell you he's right there with you. Grandmother would say it like this. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I I am his own. I don't care what you're going through. God is right there. Look at somebody and say, he's in it with you. It may seem like you by yourself. The devil's trying to make you think you're going through this by yourself. But the reason I know he's with you, because you don't even look like what you're going through. He's keeping you. He's covering you. He's sustaining you. He's providing for you. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take about 15 seconds and give God glory that God is in this thing with me. Here, here he is. Woo! He's in it with you. 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 When you get ready for that MCAT, he's in it with you. When you get ready for that LSAT, he's in it with you. When you get better to go take that SAT, he's in it with you. He, when you get better to take that exam, he's in it with you. When you go to the interview for that job, he's in it with you. When you're in that room applying for that house, he's in it with you. Am I talking to anybody up in here today? Here it is. Watch this. But the third thing I want to share with you is this, is that I want to show you something about a personal and sincere prayer. Unlike the first one who prayed with pride and self-centeredness, the second thief demonstrates contrition, humility. He owns it. He says, we deserve what we get. 
But this man has done nothing. May I drop something out there for free? Maybe a sound bite, maybe a hashtag. Maybe a Bishop Walker said colon. <laughs> he will not deliver you from what you deny. <laughs> you, if you keep denying it, you will never get delivered from it. Sure. Let that one sit in the crock pot. Some of you will get it sometime next week. But somebody got that right out of the oven. You see, people of God, you acknowledge your sin is the first step of repentance. And you will never be sorry for what Jesus does in your life because he shows up. And watch what happens. A sincere prayer occurs because once he acknowledges it, then he looks at Jesus and says one of the most powerful and sincere prayers in the entire scripture. When you come into your kingdom, remember me. Huh. I'm not asking for a car. I'm not asking for a boo. I'm not asking for my rent because I'm on a cross. Sometimes God will bring you to a place where you realize what really matters. The crisis of your cross reveals what really matters. And now all I want is for you to remember even me. The prayer of the faithful declares I have a future. Because, listen to me, to pray like this, many of us have heard this, but we have perhaps missed the deeper revelation. This man is on a cross. Jesus is on the cross. But he recognizes who Jesus is. He understands the divinity of who Jesus is. He is God in Christ. So he says, when you come into your kingdom, in order for you to have a kingdom, you must be the king. <laughs> and since you are the king, you're in control of what happens on this cross. So what I'm going to pray for is I don't know how this is going to turn out. But I do know this cross ain't the end of you. So what people think is a period is actually a comma. Because when the king is in it, there's more to do. In other words, when I pray, I can be in the most messed up situation. But I'm praying because I believe there's a bright side somewhere. I believe there's something on the other side of this. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the enemy got you thinking it's over. And that is, you might as well just conclude that this will be the end of you. But I have come to tell you, this ain't nothing but a comma, baby. You got to recognize that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. I need you to look at somebody and tell them there's more after this. You got a future after this and I don't care what they said about you I don't care what they did to you you got to pray God whatever you doing after this I just want to be with you wherever you going after I just want to be with you people may write me off and think it's over but I know I want to be where you are and guess what it doesn't matter who forgets me as long as you remember me <laughs> Based on what we see in culture, you can only imagine what he's up against. You see, when people crucify you and leave you for dead, 
they walk away and they'll forget you. But he's saying, Jesus, I'll be okay if you just remember me. I come with this word for somebody today to tell you, stop worrying about who forgot you. Thank God he remembered you. They may have hurt you, but he remembered you. They may have abandoned you, but he remembered you. They may have written you off, but he remembered you. This is why you should give God glory, that God remembers you. He remembered your faithfulness. He remembered the seeds you sown. He remembered the night you were praying when you were believing him, when your back was up against the wall. God, I give you glory that you still remembered me. Tell you something. Here's the fourth and final thing. I'll leave it with you. I have learned to praise the Savior's promise. The Lord responds to the second thief because he is demonstrating contrition. He is demonstrating repentance. And the Lord declares the thing unto him. You have to pay attention to this. Jesus looks at him and says, Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. That's a promise. Last time I checked, the promises of God are yea and amen. Last time I checked, his word does not return to him void. But it accomplishes what he says. Last time I checked, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. That when God makes you a promise, you can take that to the bank. Somebody today, all you got is a promise. All you got is what God promised you. But I just come to declare of your life, it's just enough. It's everything you need. And here's the good news, people of God. Listen very carefully. This text shows us something about repentance and restoration. Relationship is greater than the rules of religion. Come in, let me talk to you. Relationship is greater than the rules of religion. Please hear this. This man did not have a baptism. He did not have membership in the church. He did not go to Sunday school, BTU. <laughs> he did not. But he had relationship. I am not suggesting that baptism, Sunday school, discipleship programs are not necessary. They are necessary for your development to grow as a believer. Because if you are serious about your growth then you do it. But you don't have to jump through loops and hoops of religious institutions just to be accepted by Jesus because he is bigger than your Baptist doctrine. He is bigger than your Methodist doctrine. He is bigger than your Presbyterian, Episcopal, and Catholic. And this man did not go by catechism. He did not go by proselytization. Jesus accepted him. He broke the rules. Some of you, you don't accept people unless, have you been baptized? Have we given you the right hand of fellowship? You see, when I first got to Mount Zion Church 32 years ago, when we started having people join the church, I remember as if it was yesterday. Maybe it'll remind you of the church you grew up in. They would have the two chairs down front with the deacon standing behind and have me up here talking about, is there one? And then when somebody would come and give their life to Jesus, the deacon would stand up and say, after the name was read out loud by the clerk, today we happen to have Sister Susan Jones. The deacon would say, 
Well, can I get a motion that Susan Jones have all rights and privileges and be a part of this? And the deacon over there will say, I second the motion. Are you ready for the question? Ready? All in favor, say aye. And then it hit me, and I had to explain to the church, when you were born, in the maternity ward, the doctor didn't look at the nurse and say, can I have a motion? Can I get a second? The water was already broke. You were coming on anyhow. When you want a relationship with Jesus, whether or not religious institutions accept you or not, you are already saved. He accepts you just like you are. I thank God that even if I don't jump through the same hoops that you had to jump through, Jesus accepted somebody like even me. Because religious systems and rules, we get a bad rap. I was at a funeral yesterday. I just say this for free. But it's funny how people will perceive things about the church and God because they are predisposed to their own experiences. And people may not I saw it in real time. Uh, people who were dressed a little different, tatted up everywhere, may have been put in certain categories and classifications by some people, and there was an assumption, unwritten, unspoken, that I'm not accepted here. And after the funeral, I was intentional about going up to those individuals. And what I said, I'm so happy you're here. It was like I disarmed them. It was like every perception they had went away. It was like I saw them transform. Like, oh my God, you spoke to me. I'm welcome here. I was trying to let them know the same God who loved me with my messed up self. It's the same God who loves you. It doesn't matter where you come from, how you dress, what. God still loves you. Religious systems always try to push people away. But Jesus is trying to say, come unto me, all ye that are. I wish I had a witness up in here today. Reach over, tell somebody he loves you. He loves you. Listen. And I want to declare over somebody's life today. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. I want to declare with somebody's life today that God is about to give you a today testimony. I know, I know, I know, I know. Watch this. I know, I know, I know. Watch this. I'm going to give you this in like, in like five minutes, and I'm done. I'm going to give it to you in five minutes. Um, nothing happens by accident. Nothing happens. The fact that Jesus is crucified between these two thieves is not by accident. The fact that we see Gestas on one side and Discus on the other side is not by accident. The fact that we're able to see the hubris and pride of one is not by accident because it shows us a part of ourselves that often ask God for things, but we're not contrite. We don't take responsibility. And then we see Dismas, who is very contrite, who says, but remember me. All I want to do is be remembered. And Jesus says to him, today, you shall be with me in paradise. Let me tell you, I don't know who this is for, but this day will be different for you. I just need somebody to shout this day. In other words, no matter how painful your situation is, no matter how brutal your cross has been, God sent you here today. God's got you tuned in today because this is a providential moment orchestrated by God for you to hear a word like this, that God is making moves on your behalf, that everything has happened for this day. And no matter how you have been labeled, how you have been defined, no matter how you have seen your situation, God is going to make moves before this day is over. Something is going to happen in your life. I speak a today anointing over this ministry. I speak a today blessing. The next time I see you, it would have already happened. I need you just to look down your row and shout today, today, today. And that's why it doesn't matter how you feel, how the devil has been attacking you. You come in the house of God saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Somebody shout today. Today starts my turnaround. Today starts my miracle. Today starts my breakthrough. Today is the day. Wait a minute. 
But wait a minute. Two more things. That's one. Here's the second one. This one took the wind out of me. <sighs> Elder Princess, he will disrupt how you were defined. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, I'm a different kind of teacher and preacher. I told you that. When I teach scripture, I always approach scripture from a psychosocial theological perspective. What's in the mind of the people, what's happening in the culture, and how they view God in the midst of it. Watch this. The text says they are thieves. Because the culture defines them on what they have done. It is customary in cultures like that to define people based on what they have done. So I must now put you in a classification in order that I might comprehend what you are because I cannot disassociate what you've done from who you are. But see, if you know Jesus, you know what you are may not be what you did. But culture can't separate that because they are social. That's why they label you. That's why they have a tag, a classification. The woman with the issue of blood, blind bottomers, right? The 10 lepers. People associate you with what you've done. So all we know is that they are thieves. And watch this. When Jesus speaks to the unrepentant thief, or he speaks to the repentant thief, Notice Jesus never calls him a thief. He just says, today, you going to be with me in paradise. I don't care what they called you. You are not what they called you. You are what I called you. Look at somebody and say, I know my name now. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed going in and blessed coming out. I am a royal priesthood. I am a chosen general. I am not what you call me. I am not the names and titles and classifications that you kind of put me in because that's your only way of associating with me. Jesus disrupts how I've been defined. How you gonna, how you gonna do that for a criminal? He ain't a criminal to Jesus. To Jesus. He's a human being who deserves another chance. Wait a minute. Here's the third thing. He determines my destiny. Now, 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 destiny is the root word for destination. How it turns out. Now, what you will find fascinating is that the religious community is responsible for why Jesus is on the cross. The religious community led by Caiaphas is responsible for why Jesus is on the cross. And what you will discover, crucifixions were not things that happened with regularity in Rome. When they did occur, they were very rare occurrences. Watch this. But crowds gathered to watch men be crucified. What kind of person <laughs> makes sport or who desires to be in the audience to watch somebody be crucified? The same kind of person that always sending you a text message talking about, did you hear? Did you see? The same person that's out there gossiping and always because we love to see people crucified. And when you love to see people crucified, you love to condemn people. And when you condemn someone, you condemn them somewhere. And so Holy Spirit said to me, you know what the crowd is doing? Waiting on two things. Waiting on you to die so you can go in their mind to hell because in their mind what you did deserves hell 
which makes this text make me want to run around the sanctuary. Because the very person you thought was going to hell, Jesus says, today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Look at somebody that said, they're trying to send me to hell. But God's got greater plans for my life. But here is what I love. Wait a minute. Hey, this is for the person sitting next to you. This is for the person sitting next to you. Here it is. Thief on the right dies. The thief on the left dies. Pastor Darrell, Jesus said, it is finished. And Jesus, watch it, said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, meaning I control this. He gave up the ghost. And when he died, now there are three people that have died on the cross. But one of them who said, remember me, has died to the people, but living his best life with Jesus. There were seasons now where God said, I will make you die to certain relationships and have you living your best life with Jesus. You ought to give God glory that people think you gone, people think it's over, but they don't realize you about to live your best life with Jesus. Can you give him glory? Can you give him praise that he loves somebody even even me I want you to stand all over this place today the thing is the thing is there's one thief on the cross who wasn't with Jesus after Calvary. Where did he go? I don't know. If he went to hell, I don't know. I know he wasn't with Jesus. And the Jews believed that hell was the absence of God. <laughs> How can you be that close to Jesus and miss heaven? I want you today to hear me, child of God. God loves you. He's looking for you to just say, Lord, remember me. I own what I've done, but God, I need your grace. And I'm not trying to do life by myself. I want to be where you are. And today, God sent this word because this is a word for your life. This is a word to help you make the best decision you could ever make in your life. Even if you're watching me around the world, God is speaking to you. And today on that screen, I want you to text that word right now, salvation to 78228. If you're in this building, on this floor, on that second back, on that third balcony, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your belongings. If you need a relationship with Jesus Christ, I don't care what color you are, what denomination, you got to get out of all that. That's pride. Nobody care about all that. All we care about is loving you. Is your blood red? Do you cry sometimes? You, you, you get tired, but you're one of us. <laughs> and we want you to know that this is a place of love, reconciliation. And if you need Jesus in your life, come. Maybe you say, Pastor, you know what? I need to get my life back on track. Come. Pastor, I've been looking for a church home like this where I can really say, this is the place where I'm covered spiritually, the place where I'm growing in the things of God. Come. Pastor, I moved to Nashville, and I don't have a church home, and I want to be a part of this ministry. I want you to come right now. Come on, that's it. Come on. And we're going to rejoice at every soul that makes it down here. Come on, church. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on now, now, now. He loves you. He loves you. Come on, come on, come on. 
Can you say? You may. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He loves you. He loves you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Come on. Made a way. Come on. Come on. He loves you. He loves you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on. You made a way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Come on, come on. Come on, I don't care how far you got to walk. Remember that walk Jesus took for you? He took a long walk for you because he loved you. Come on. Oh my God, come on. Hallelujah. Come on, I see you, I see you, I see you. Come on. Come on. Oh. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You call. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, and you'll be. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. You. Come on. Hallelujah. There is. My God. Come on. Jesus, come on. I want you to put those hands together and give God glory for every one of these lives. And all those lives around the country right now that have made that decision, we declare over your life, God loves you. God loves you. He 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 loves you. Yes, you Come on, let's yes, thank God does. for every one of these. Right behind you, I want you to follow that sign that says, follow me. I want you to be giving a door to the party for you. Come on, outside. Let's he thank God. Come on, they're going to get some information from you. And we want to follow up with you. Just go right down here. Come on. That's right. He Just briefly, you. they'll he share with you. you. Come on. Come on. Come on. You made a way. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed today? Don't forget, Friday is Good Friday, and we look forward to seeing you at Jefferson Street or stream in at 12 noon. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And if there's any reason for you now, please understand the five people you bring, there's no requirement. Bring them on in. I don't care what's going on in their life. They say, well, I don't have them nowhere. I come just like you are. Because we want you just to come into the house of God. And we want you to receive what God's going to say. Because I believe you're going to see a great harvest of souls of people. Because of what you did, you can say, I give God glory. Somebody came to know Jesus because I extended an invitation. It's going to be amazing and I cannot wait. Thank God for these young people today. Come on, let's thank God. Y'all are awesome, man. Judah, 
And all the musicians over there, I see you. I see you. Look at that. On the keyboard, on the, on the uh, guitar. Yes, yes, yes. I see you. I love it. I love it. We thank God for y'all. Amen. Father, we are so grateful, thankful for your grace and your goodness, thankful for how good you've been. Even me stands in this place to thank you for being everything we need. Cover us, keep us as we leave this place and never your presence. Go with us now. In Jesus' name, amen.